Now, all ingredients need salt. The noodle or the tender spring pea would be narcissistic to imagine it already contained within its cell walls all the perfection it would ever need. We seem, too, to fear that we are failures at being tender and springy, if we need to be seasoned. It's not so. It doesn't reflect badly on pea or person that either needs help to be most itself. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It's week two. <laughs> we need our down at the farm. Being silly. <laughs> We're, we are um, pressing on to chapter two in our book, An Everlasting Meal, Cooking with Economy and Grace. I hope you are finding your own copy. There are multiple recipes tucked into each one of these, and we'll touch on a lot of them throughout the season. Today, chapter two says, how to teach an egg to fly. There's a great quote from C.S. Lewis. It may be hard for an egg to turn into a bird. It would be a jolly sight harder for it to learn to fly while remaining an egg. So today, <laughs> that's why we're laughing. <laughs> yes, Nims and I are gonna take eggs, and the farm has lovely, gorgeous, tasty eggs. We're gonna make the a eggs fly. fly. Yeah. And we're gonna make a, a recipe that we make every summer down here at the farm. It's more like a template, so you can throw a lot of different things at it. Um, it's a recipe that evolved over 40 years in our household. My son was a cross-country runner. He needed lots of calories, and he needed to be able to take a ton of food with him when he went off to high school every morning. And so he started putting a little bit of flour in it, but couldn't have flour, so we went to garbanzo bean flour. Um, and that adds protein, and it stiffens it up a little bit if you want it for handheld eating. If you want a softer, more delicate quiche, you can leave it out. We're going to put it in. Um, just because it makes it easier to serve for lunch, and I have punch David's going to be eating this for lunch. Oh, um, I'm sure. <laughs> so we'll show you how to braise greens this week. What else? Now we'll start with the braised greens. Okay, yeah. let's do that, That's and just, then we'll press yeah. on. Yeah. All right. So we go. we've already got the onions chopped up, and they are being uh, slowly, slowly, slowly uh, cooking over here. They're getting a little brown, which we really don't particularly want, but a little bit will be okay. So you can see that they're chopped up pretty fine and they take quite a while so be patient at this stage. Okay, give them 20 minutes or so so they get nice and soft. They'll kind of melt into your casserole or your quiche or your whatever you're making and that way the mouthfeel, especially for little children, they'll have that delightful sweetness that the onion can provide but they won't even know it's there so there's no yuck I don't like that. So <laughs> then once that gets softened up that's when you're going to add, <clears throat> oh, and by the way, this is in some olive oil. Um, you can use butter, but I would rarely recommend the olive oil because it doesn't burn as fast, um, so it's just easier to handle. Add your garlic later. Do not put it in your pan right away. I know a lot of recipes talk about that, but if this turns too brown, it gets incredibly bitter. So. Adding it after this stage is actually a really good idea. So we can add this and then we're going to add just a smidge of some nutmeg and a little bit of chipotle. You've got another hot pepper, go ahead and use that. And what this is going to do, it's going to counteract some of that um, bitterness that you get out of your greens. Um, today we're using kale and radish greens. And um, so they can be just a little on the bitter side. Um, but this is going to change all of that chemistry and turn it into something much sweeter and delightful. So once this is cooking down, we'll go ahead and throw in the rest of all this stuff. And um, it's just a little dab will do ya. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be a lot. You don't have to really measure. But no more than just a little, you know, a little dash for this amount. Just go ahead and throw it in your pan. And then wait till you smell your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and a teeny tiny bit of that. It's and not just, gonna taste hot. No, you're not gonna taste any heat. It's just gonna balance that bitter so it doesn't pop out at you. And then that can go in and stir it around. And then just throw in your garlic until that, of course, starts to smell delightful. Joke in our house is uh, if you're running late for dinner, you just put some onion and garlic on the stove and it looks like, sounds like, smells like you've been cooking all day. <laughs> And now, so this is all going to saute just for a couple more minutes, and then this part will be, we'll just wait until it's called blooming, until you start to smell the onion. 
then you know it's, it's, got, it's already started to do its change. <clears throat> so what's happening is the sugars are coming forward in the onion. And when I used to teach fifth grade kids how to cook, um, we used to have them stick their nose over the pan and smell. And I said, when it smells sweet, then you know they're done. Yeah. So they had fun doing that. I know, those are all good smells. The barn smells like food now. It does. And there's no, you can just throw this all in together. Um, if we had chard, we would have used the chard stems. They're very edible, and they would have gone in with the onions to soften. And this has been cut very fine. This is, again, a chiffonade ribbon. Cut it up really fine. Um, that's for mouthfeel, because um, you don't want to get a big piece pulling through your teeth. Um, again, when it's chopped up really fine like an onion, you don't really know. Uh, it's, well, you know it's there, but it's not going to dominate your mouth. I'm going to put a little water in that, maybe since yeah. those weren't that wet. Normally, when we braise our greens, they're still, we haven't spun them quite so dry. So I'm going to add about a, oh, a third of a cup of water on the bottom, and we're just going to cover it and let it steam down. That worked. Yep. On low, maybe just a little higher than low. <laughs> You'll have to figure that out. But I always have folks. Cook it for five minutes, and then start folding the greens into the onions more thoroughly, mm -hmm. and then they'll start to wilt down. Cook them thoroughly, because this is gonna go in a casserole, and the idea is you, don't, you want to start introducing these flavors to your reluctant greens eaters. In the yes, place. including yourself, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we'll let that cook for five minutes, and we'll come back. Now we're checking on the braise. It's been about five minutes. And you can see it's cooked down. Often in our house, the, when we first load the pan, it's so full that I actually mash it down with the lid. It'll cook down as long as there's a teeny bit of water in there. And you can see it's still cooking. I'd still give it another 10 minutes because I want those greens thoroughly cooked um, before it goes in the casserole, and then we'll give it a chance to cool down before we add it to the eggs. There's also, once you have a big pot of braised greens, you've got something that you can use throughout the week. So it's not just for doing this casserole. Um, they work wonderful, just even piled on toast um, with, with an egg on top. It works great, just even mixed with, I even mixed it the other day with a little bit of mayonnaise and spread it really thick on my sandwich. Um, there's just a lot of things you can do. I almost always keep a bowl of braised greens in my refrigerator. Um, if somebody comes over and I need to do a quick uh, omelet, or omelet or something or a frittata, um, it's great even put into um, a lasagna or stuff some shells. It's just there's lots of opportunities to, to use it. There are. And one year we were trying to introduce people to greens and so we made just a very simple risotto. Oh. And then folded the braised greens into it, and, yep. and we had more converts that day. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We're still eating greens. So the end, it's pretty endless what you can do with them once you start start to use them and then start to broaden out. Um, it just really, truly is like this miracle little batch of goodies in your refrigerator for any last minute cooking you've got to do with this at all. So while Mimi is cracking eggs into a bowl, remember what we talked about last week in terms of food safety, keep your raw eggs away from Whoops. your vegetables, um, just for your own health and safety. So we're going to whip up a dozen eggs, and in that, we're going to include a little salt and pepper. Um, if I had put nutmeg, if Mimi and I hadn't put nutmeg in the green braise and we were just doing a plain casserole, then I would put a little nutmeg in there. Um, it's a pretty simple ingredients. Very simple, but incredible. This would work really well for even company, a brunch. Be yeah. fabulous. And then we're going to use, once we get the eggs whipped up, then we'll put a pint of cottage cheese in it and about a quarter cup of garbanzo bean flour that I brought from home. Garbanzo bean flour is just a nice way to stiffen it up so that once you've cooled it and cut it, you can hold it like a lunch square. we has got the eggs nearly whipped together. And then I think we will add the cottage cheese. More protein. <laughs> Calcium. That's right. Pepper. You decide. 
I'm going to use about a quarter of a teaspoon. Then we want to use, you can also use a whisk, you don't need to use a fork. <laughs> it's just that we can't find our whisk. whisk. <laughs> Things disappear. Oh, I forgot to bring it, I'm not sure. So I'm going to do about four scoops of garbanzo bean flour while Mimi whips it in. Or flour. Yeah, you can use flour. Or if you just want a, uh, a more delicate casserole and you're serving it for adults in a brunch, you can just put maybe one scoop. So we're back to our braise has finished on the stove. Took about, oh, we gave it 15 minutes because I want to make sure those onions are nice and soft. Uh, and we're going to, now in my house, I will often do a huge batch of this. And then I have a glass container, very much like this one. And I'll scoop it out and just let it cool. I like these because you can spread them out, they, they'll stop cooking. And you let it cool, and then this just tucks in my refrigerator with a piece of parchment paper over it. And during the week, thank you, oh my God. during the week, then I could just scoop out what I want. Now, we only cooked enough to go in the casserole for today, so we're gonna let this cool a little bit because uh, when we add the eggs, we don't wanna scramble the eggs before they've had a chance no. to gently set in the casserole. I lightly rubbed the pan with some olive oil, or if you have that spray stuff, go ahead and use that. And then we're going to put the greens on the bottom of the casserole. Now, you're going to say, why are you transferring from one to the other? One, this isn't big enough for the full recipe. And two, um, in my house, I might have done a double batch, and then the rest of it goes back in the fridge for another meal. But we'll spread that out. So it can actually have a lot more greens in here if you want. And other vegetables too. I mean, oh, yeah. I've raised cabbage down. Um, what else? You can... Oh, peppers. In the summer, later on oh. in the summer when we get peppers, that's a fun thing to put in there. And then about two cups of cheese. Okay, so we've started to assemble it in layers like this. And then... So this is the egg and cottage cheese and salt and pepper and a little bit of garbanzo bean flour. And we're gonna put that on top and then we're gonna put it in an oven at 350 degrees and bake it anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. Um, I'm going to use an insti wreath thermometer and I'm pretty sure when it gets to 160 degrees it should be set, but I'll check. We'll see if I'm even close on that temperature, but the 160 degrees is safe temperature for, for cooking. So we're going to turn around now, check our eggs. It just came to a boil. We're going to turn it off, put the timer on for two minutes. So we're back to our egg casserole. <laughs> say, say that again. We're back to our egg casserole and we're going to finish assembling this. Mimi, will you check the recipe to make sure I didn't forget anything? <laughs> I've been known to do that. We both have. <laughs> and I just poke that ca the uh, spatula down in so that the eggs settle all the way to the bottom. Like so. Now, you've got a choice here. You can leave it in layers like I am, or you can stir it together. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you can always add some fresh herbs, too, if you've got them. Yeah. Or chives. Or chives. This time of year, chives. You know what I'm going to do? I think, because I think this is going to turn into a, a, a handheld square. I'm going to stir it. I think if I was serving it for a Sunday brunch, I would not stir it. I would leave it in layers, and it would be a lot more delicate. But because this is going to end up being probably lunch squares, I think I'll stir it like that. There we go. Oh, yeah. goes. Our oven's outside. So Mimi's off to put it in the oven. Oil. I'm 
let it go too long because we don't want to burn that oil. Okay, so if, you re if you're reading chapter two, uh, Tamar has lots of suggestions on how to cook an egg. I'm going to soft boil it. So we're going to bring this to a boil, immediately turn it off, put the timer on for two minutes, and when two minutes goes off, we'll run it over to the sink, put some cold water on it, and I will crack the two soft boiled eggs uh, into a bowl like this, and then we'll pour them in and whip it into the dressing, and that'll make it creamy. It's almost like making mayonnaise. So, yeah, and I left that in there a little too long. It should be a little runnier than that. These are beautiful. Now, far fresh eggs don't like to let go of that membrane. No. So cutting them in half and then scraping them out to use for soups or sauces or just serving a poached or a soft boiled egg on a salad is your best bet. There we go. There we go. That's what it should look like. Nice and runny. But Tamar and I have a bit of a disagreement. She says, oh, just put your cell off. And oh. I say, oh, heavens, you'll be there all day. Take a spoon and scoop it out. Whoops. Don't want shell in there. Like so. There we go. Changed a little bit of color. Let's put that in one of those glass bowls, maybe so they can see. There we go. So in our house that would get stored in a pint size, like a leftover peanut butter jar or in our house mason jars with those wonderful reusable plastic lids. And then you can use it throughout the week. If you've got kind of a dressing theme for the week, that really helps decision making when it comes to salads or popping up the flavor on leftovers or an interesting savory breakfast, which we will talk about through the summer to really encourage you to reconsider what you consider breakfast. Hey everyone, so we're just opening it up and it's been about 35 minutes and it's set. Now generally when I take it out of the oven, I give it another five minutes to continue because that probably could have come out about three or four minutes ago. Let's take it inside. It's just coming up to 160 degrees, so it's just about perfectly done. Perfect. The center is where it's going to be coolest. No, it's 170, so we're good. It actually could have come out about three minutes earlier, but it's fine. Plenty of moisture with all that cottage cheese in it. Now you can see we didn't mince, we didn't go back through the braise after it was cooked to finely mince it. This is grown up style, but if you're introducing young children, then don't allow that to happen. Take that cooked braise chop it up even finer and then fold it into the casserole. So, now that can cool for about probably five minutes before we try and cut it and serve it. And then we'll plate it. And then in the meantime, we're going to toss the mustard greens with that salad dressing and then show you a few other little goodies that can go alongside it. Um, so after we washed it, um, we have laid it out on a towel, spun it dry, but it's actually better if it sits in the refrigerator for a few hours or even overnight because then you've chilled and it tends to dry just a little bit. The water droplets are absorbed in the tea towels that we taught you about last week. Um, but we'll go ahead and make the salad this week. So it also helps to crisp it up after you've bruised it up a little bit. We like to run a knife through this um, just for mouthfeel so there aren't huge pieces. I know people tell you not to cut greens, but we're really geared to trying to get people to try new things. And if mouthfeel is going to be a stopping block, we don't want that to happen. No. Put a bit on here. This is that wonderful dressing. And now we creamed it up with some soft boiled egg. And egg is always really nice with bitter greens. But try the miso, you guys, because that is a glorious flavor. It really is. So what I like to do with my salads these days is I will take a bowl, almost exactly like this one at home, toss my salad 
without any of the other things that you want to put it. You know those American salads where everybody dumps 16 things in there and all the good stuff falls to the bottom of the bowl? Well, why don't we just do it this way? So we'll plate it out. I'm going to put it on the edge because we're going to put some of the casserole on here too. Oh, I can smell that. That smells really good. So that egg in there is really going to help the, the bitter to lay down. So last growing season, we went up to Wolf Pack and George helped us can up some beets from the farm. And this is an old family recipe that comes from our household. So these are going to be spicy now. Those of you who tried them when they were first put up last fall, they weren't that spicy. But now, now they're going to have some bite. But rather than putting it on top, I like to put it on the edge so that people have a chance as, you're, as they're serving themselves to just get at the beets like so. There we go. A refrigerator pickle recipe. So if you go to week two on the website, you're going to see a refrigerator uh, recipe for turnips or kohlrabi or radishes. radishes. Now if the family members in your household don't like the bite of those types of vegetables, this will solve that. Now the pink comes from purple onions. These were put up last growing season at our place. Uh, but they're wonderful on salads and sandwiches. And so I might just put them alongside here. So we have sweet and we've got sweet hot. And we've got these glorious mustard greens in the vinaigrette, maple, citrus. We put egg, but it could be miso. Um, so if you're interested in doing some refrigerator pickles, they last a long time as long as you don't put your fingers in them, right, Means? Oh yeah, no fingers in the jar. <laughs> Fork or knife only. And then Mimi's got some mints. Oh yeah, we want to put it on the casserole. Now well, I won't show, I guess. I don't. I wouldn't do this for children who are just getting used to eating things. But if you bring it to the table for grown-ups, that's what you do. And then you've got all that flavor there. So there, nothing goes to waste. Ta-da! Look at the Look how gorgeous. We've got cheesy egg casserole, and you can put that in your fridge and use that for lunches or have it for your main dish. We've got salad made out of our mustard greens, um, pickled beets from the farm, Mimi's wonderful salad dressing. So you've got lots of options for the week. There you go. Have a great week, guys. We'll see you next time. Now, uh, first of all, I think I'll start with um, some of the fun things that could be in your basket this week, uh, depending on what kind of share you have. Um, these are one of my favorites. This is kohlrabi. They looked uh, purple, obviously, in the light green. Um, they taste the same. They're probably one of my most favorite veggies. Store-bought, no. Um, and don't be afraid to, when you get something that looks like this. Um, it's totally fine. It's already got its skin all the way around, so it's protecting the, the flesh, so there's no big deal there. Um, and we're gonna, you're going to be slicing it up anyway, but see how it's just totally fine on the inside. And then we're just going to cut away a little bit of the, the dark, I mean, the, yeah, that rim there. And then um, we also have some lovely romaine radishes, the French little cutie pies here that are just so worth just eating as is. Fresh turnips. The spring turnips are out of this world. I eat them like candy at home. Um, the greens can also be used for your saute that we're doing today or it can be just chopped up and put into a mince or into a salad. Um, and then our fresh, our cabbages are already starting to come out and look at the size of this. And then we have kale, I mean, excuse me, chard down here. And the beautiful thing about chard also is not only can it be used in your braise, but again, it's wonderful to stuff, but the stems are awesome. Same thing that we were doing before, we either cut or pull them off. And this can go in your braise, this can too, but you would cut this up fine and put this in at the beginning with your onions and so you're literally using the entire plant so that works good and then of course 
all summer long. We'll have our delightful little zucchinis. And then we have mustard greens. Um, again, this can go in your braise or it can be in your salad. And this is why this dressing will complement something like a more bitter green. Um, it'll lay down that sharpness. When the leaves are young like this, this is when they're absolutely phenomenal. And when they get really big, then you're know, like with your greens of your radishes and stuff, it becomes a different kind of plant. It's not as um, light and pretty. It'll get kind of bristly when they get older. So this is the time to use it for a braise or your salads. But I'm just going to have fun thinking that this is all I've got left in my refrigerator. This is it. But I, what am I going to do with it? So I'm just going to do a real quick little, um, what we call a mini mint. I'm just going to, uh, something is cooking or you're just waiting for the timer to go off or you're waiting for your braise to do its job. Just cut off the bad stuff and then just slice up. You can do it as thin or as thick as you want. Minces I tend to want to do pretty thin. Um, I'm not doing a very good job of cutting. Usually I make them very uniform. But it doesn't affect the flavor. But it, it does not <laughs> affect the flavor at all. It's just, you know, a habit for me. Um, so this way I'm doing a little bit of color here. And then we're going to have the same thing with our little spring turnips, which is making it very hard for me not just to pop it in my mouth. These are candy. You can saute them, but man, I'll tell you what, these new babies like this, you just can't get anywhere. And then, of course, we've got this guy. So you do not want the peel. That's pretty tough. Um, again, these work really great. Just slice up like a carrot stick. And um, they're wonderful to eat just that way, of course, in a salad. See, this is again how you want to cut. You want to do that rocking motion that we're talking about where you go this way, not this way. And use your claw fingers so you don't cut a fingertip off. And that way your knife, your knuckles can be kind of your guide in your chopping. And just for fun, I just have a little lettuce, a little lettuce leaf or whatever. So I'm going to put that in there. Again, a really fine little chop. Rock back and forth. The tip of your blade doesn't need to ever leave your board. And I'm going to mix that all up together and so it comes nice and you can just see it looks pretty just the way it is. So it can be as simple as that with a dash of vinegar on it. You can do add whatever flavors you want from here. We're going to probably just put this on top of our egg casserole just to make it look pretty. And then also, obviously nutrient wise, it helps. And then it gives you a little bit of crunch also um, and some bright flavor for the top. But again, you can use anything we have on here can go on in here in your mitts. Especially again, the idea is just to use up your little bits and pieces and turn it into something that is very yummy and bright. And then when you have a mint again like this, this is great again just to throw on a piece of fish, on a piece of chicken. It can get tossed into a salad, um, put it on a piece of bread with an egg on top, whatever. But so lots of different ways to use this without having to waste one little tiny tip.